Gus and the Baby Ghost by Jane Thayer, pictures by Seymour Fleshman, a read aloud for our dear true heart and our little kit. Gus and the Baby Ghost. Gus the Ghost and Mr. Frizzle ran the historical museum. Gus at night, Mr. Frizzle during the day. Mr. Frizzle lived upstairs. Gus had an attic apartment. Cor the cat lived here and there, and Mouse, the mouse, had his own private quarters. Late one night, when Gus was in charge, Cora came in from a moonlight walk and said, A baby ghost's outside! Sure enough, a baby ghost wrapped in a ghostly blanket lay on the step. What do I do with it? Gus cried. Wah! yelled the baby ghost. Feed, said Cora. Grown-up ghosts never get hungry, but baby ghosts often do. Gus carried the baby ghost in its blanket into the old-fashioned kitchen and found some milk. Warm, advised Cora. Gus warmed the milk. Bottle, said Cora. Gus made some ghostly remarks and a baby's bottle appeared. Wee! yelled baby ghost when the milk was gone. Burp, advised Cora. Gus tossed baby ghost over his shoulder and patted until a bubble came up. Wee! change, directed Cora. Gus produced a clean diaper. Coo, said baby ghost contentedly when the diaper was changed. Sleepy, said Cora. Gus had just laid Baby Ghost in the antique cradle and covered it with the old paisley shawl when Mr. Frizzle came running downstairs, his bathrobe flying. Oh, I thought I heard a baby, he cried. Baby Ghost, corrected Gus. Where, yelled Mr. Frizzle. Cradle, said Gus. The cradle looked empty to Frizzle, but he could see it was rocking gently. What in thunder is it doing here, he shouted. Sleeping, said Gus. Mr. Frizzle, who had a terrible temper, began to shout and tell Gus he wouldn't have a baby ghost in his museum. Gus began to shout back, not knowing what else to do. Cora went under the Boston rocker and Mouse scurried into the wall. Baby ghost waked up with all this noise and yelled, Wah! Cora yowled, Meow! Mouse snarled, Shut up! Go to bed, Frizzle, shouted Gus. Finally, Mr. Frizzle pounded upstairs. When he had gone, Gus sat down with a sigh of relief in the Boston rocker, and Cora leaped into his lap. Gus rocked the cradle until Baby Ghost fell asleep. Gus understood how Mr. Frizzle felt. Frizzle was proud that many people came to see the museum, and he didn't want anything to frighten them. Gus kept out of the way, but a crying Baby Ghost might not. I'll do something tomorrow, thought Gus. He fell asleep rocking the cradle. Baby ghost slept and Cora slept. Only Mouse whisked about busily looking for a crumb of something. When daylight came, Gus warmed another bottle for baby ghost. Bath, advised Cora. Gus got a baby's bathtub and filled it with warm ghostly water. Baby ghost was so cute, splashing and happily gurgling that Gus began to feel happy himself. When he had it all dry and smelling of ghostly talcum powder, he decided he would like to keep this little baby ghost. But I can't keep it in my attic apartment, he told himself. It has to sleep in the cradle. Besides, my ghostly bones are too old to run upstairs with bottles. He carried baby ghost back to the old cradle. Wah! cried baby ghost who was hungry again. Down came Frizzle, filled with fury. It's still here, he cried. Shh, said Gus. Call the police, shouted Mr. Frizzle. Very funny, said Gus. Wee! yelled baby ghost. Mr. Frizzle called the police himself. There's a baby ghost at the historical museum. Come and get it. Beg pardon, said the police. I want to get rid of a baby ghost, shouted Mr. Frizzle. Two policemen came. What seems to be the trouble, they said. We've got a baby ghost, said Mr. Frizzle. Are you feeling all right, Mr. Frizzle? Asked the police. I feel fine, shouted Frizzle. Show us this baby ghost, said the policeman politely. But Gus had decided that he was going to scare the policeman away. He raced upstairs and brought down his bang clank equipment, which he kept in case somebody wanted to hear a ghost clanking around. <laughs> bang clank, went Gus on his bang clank equipment. Wah, yelled baby ghost at the noise. The policeman turned pale and bumped into each other, rushing out the door. Just then, an early visitor arrived. Keep that kid quiet, hissed Frizzle. Gus snatched Baby Ghost from the cradle and gave it a bottle. He sang a ghostly lullaby until it went back to sleep. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Frizzle felt calmer when the visitor left without knowing they had a baby ghost. He said in a reasonable voice, Now, Gus, 
you know you've got to get rid of it. If I keep it quiet, Gus thought craftily, Frizzle will never know it's here. Leave it to me, Frizzle, he said, and Mr. Frizzle went off reassured. Then Gus got a book on the care and feeding of baby ghosts. He ordered milk from the milkman and put in supplies of baby food, ghostly diapers, and talcum powder to keep baby ghost comfy. He found a ghostly rattle and other toys to keep it amused. He oiled the antique music box so it played tinkly tunes that baby ghosts liked to hear. Baby ghost was content and didn't cry. But one day, Mr. Frizzle, who thought the baby ghost was gone, happened to be passing the cradle when he heard a soft coo. He stopped short and stared at the cradle. You didn't get rid of it, he shouted. Yelled baby ghost, alarmed at the noise. Meow! Yelled Cora, alarmed by ba the baby ghost. Listen, Frizzle! Yelled Gus. Then he lowered his voice. If you would control your temper, everything would be fine. Finally, Mr. Frizzle sat down in the Boston rocker, not knowing what else to do. He lowered his voice too and said, Harumph! He stared at the cradle, which still looked empty to him. Do you swear it won't cry and ruin business? He demanded. If you don't come roaring around, retorted Gus. Harumph, said Mr. Frizzle. Then Gus put up a large sign. Quiet, please, to remind Mr. Frizzle. Mr. Frizzle began to talk to visitors in hushed tones. He stopped shouting at Gus. He didn't even say harumph because he didn't want to make baby ghost cry and alarm the people. But Gus saw him glance at the cradle sometimes and he knew Mr. Frizzle was nervous. One day, Mr. Frizzle was telling a lady visitor in hushed tones so he wouldn't wake Baby Ghost, This is an antique cradle. Suddenly, Mr. Frizzle, the visitor, and Gus, who was nearby, were startled to hear quite plainly, Coo! Have you got a baby ghost? the lady cried. Certainly not, cried Frizzle. Oh, I wish you had a baby ghost, said the lady sadly. Frizzle looked at the lady in surprise. He eyed her suspiciously. Was she joking? He liked to please the visitors to his museum. So finally, Frizzle said cautiously, uh, we might have a small baby ghost. The lady rushed off to tell her friends this wonderful, delightful historical museum had something very special, a real baby ghost. Soon crowds of people came, tiptoed in, and stood around waiting to hear the baby ghost in the antique cradle on the, under the old paisley shawl say, Your baby ghost sounds so happy, everyone whispered. Mr. Frizzly proudly whispered back, Our baby ghost has a happy home, that's why. Before long, baby ghost was a permanent member of the household. Sometimes, when the museum closed after a busy day, Mr. Frizzle sat down in the Boston rocker in a rare good humor. Cora leaped into his lap. Mouse kept as quiet as a mouse. Mr. Frizzle rocked the cradle while Gus hung baby ghosts ghostly washing out in the evening air.